Well, hello, good people. A few weeks ago, I did a video on Focus MRE. Unfortunately, that version is no longer gonna be updated. So we're gonna focus on the original version, pun intended, because there's been quite a few changes to it. But let's start with the installation, which is super simple. As always, links in the description below. Once you get to this page, we just have to scroll down. I encourage you to read what it's all about and just to give you an idea, but you'll come across installing Focus here. Scroll down until you find this link. Click here to download. Simply just have to click on that and it's gonna default to your downloads folder. Just click on save. You'll probably need 7-zip to extract these files. Once it finishes downloading, you just have to right click, open with 7-zip. At the top, select extract. And then you want to click on the three dots here and select where you want to install it. Now I've already done this, but I tend to put it under my personal folder under users. And then I created a separate focus folder by clicking on make new folder. Once you do that, you just press okay. Then it's going to extract all the files that you need. Once that's done, you'll see three BAT files. I'll come back to this in a second, but you also have your main focus folder here. This is where your models will be installed, any other assets. Before we finish the installation and run it, I tend to take these icons and put them on my desktop. That way I don't have to keep going into the folders. So you right click, show more options, send to and select desktop, create shortcut, and it's going to create a shortcut on your desktop. Do the same for the run anime.bat, run realistic.bat. As I said, we'll get into those later. These are fairly recent changes to the original focus. Next, you just want to double click. You'll get the command window up and then you're going to see that it's going to start downloading the assets. Just leave it alone. Don't touch it. It may take a few minutes to download all the assets, all the requirements. You don't have to download Python or anything like that. It's going to take care of everything for you. And it's also going to download the SDXL model. If you see here, SDXL base, it should download the refiner too. While this finishes up, let's go back to the main focus folder here. Should you want to use other SDXL? DXL models. You want to come into the focus folder here. I should have probably renamed this something else, but oh well. <laughs> then you'll see a folder here called models. You want to double click that. Under your models folders, you'll find one called checkpoints. This is where you're going to find your stable diffusion models. You see that it's downloading the base model and the refiner at the moment. And once it's done, you're going to see a very simple interface. And they created this to be very easy to use. I'm just going to do a simple prompt, like a howling wolf at night. And let's say moon in the background, full moon in the background. And all you have to do is click generate. I think by default, it creates two images. I'm going to show you how we could change that. If you're new to Stable Diffusion and SDXL, this is probably the best platform to start with. And even if you're an intermediate to advanced user, you want something quick and simple, I highly recommend Focus. But you see that installation was super simple, very easy to do, probably one of the easiest ones out of all the other platforms. There you go. Simple prompt, beautiful images here, except for this looks a bit cut off, but whatever. Now, if you wanted to tinker with the advanced settings, let me move my big head here for a second. At the bottom, you'll see input image, which we'll talk about later and an option for advanced. Let's click on that. The first tab is your settings. Under performance, we have speed and quality. If you click on quality, it's going to prioritize quality over speed. I will say the speed version does does pretty good. And then we have some pre-made aspect ratios, which is super handy. An area for the quantity of images. I'm going to change this to one for now. And then we have our negative prompts. Random is just for your seeds. If you uncheck that, it'll reveal the seed. Let's leave that on random. Clicking on style. These styles are like presets. They're pre-made prompts. You see there's even some specific ones for focus anime, focus realistic, 
the SAI represents Stability AI's prompts that they were using for their own site. And then there's a whole bunch of other ones. Mine looks all bunched up because I have it zoomed in. If I zoom out here, you see there's quite a few here. Game Street Fighter. I saw a Pokemon one too. There's quite a bit of styles there. So I wish it had the drop down like it was in the MRE version. Let's move on now to the models tab. And this is where you're going to have your model options. So right now we have the base model refiner on either side. You could turn the refiner off if you wanted to. And if I had loaded any other models, they would be available here, which I'll do afterwards. If you had any LoRa's loaded, the folder we were in previously, instead of models, you would just look for the LoRa folder. You dump them in there and then you can tweak the weights here. Very handy, easy to use. And then the advanced setting, we have the sampling sharpness. One or two is fine. Maybe on occasion you might want to go higher. You really just have to experiment with it. Typically I leave it. There's some documentation here that'll bring you to some of the advanced functions here just to read. It doesn't look like at this time there's any control net functionality like the MRE version, which is unfortunate. I hope they do add that eventually. But if we click on input image here, you see now we have more options. We have an upscale or variation, image prompting, which is very cool. We'll take a look at that in a second and in painting and out painting. All right, so I'm gonna save this photo, bring it into the variation. You have an upscale or variation options here. Subtle, strong, upscale 1.5, upscale by two, upscale fast by two. Let's do a strong variation and we'll click generate. Definitely has more contrasting color, more of that backlight effect, but yeah, really cool. If we go into image prompt, this is really interesting. I'll just do one. This is sort of like the control net IP adapter where you don't necessarily need a prompt to create a variation of the image. And it's similar to what mid journey has. If I click on advance here, you see, you're going to get quite a few options here, the wait, where to stop. I won't go into too much detail today. I'll do a separate video for this, but you can even take out the prompt and let's do uh, three variations. We'll click generate. Now, when you first run it, it might take a bit long. It's going to download the control net models that it uses. And there you go. There's our variations. Very interesting that it made this image a woman. Again, there's no prompt, but yeah, that looks really amazing. I like the uh, photorealism happening there, more hyper-realistic. But yeah, that's image prompting. The next tab over, we've got in painting and out painting. Supposedly, you could drag it from this area. And it's a very simple in painting and out painting method. Let's start with the in painting. Let's say we want to increase the left side here. You want to select left and click on generate. Shortcut keys, control enter. And basically you just go one side at a time. If you select all directions, typically you're going to get seams and it doesn't look that great. So you could see on the side here now that this area is being generated, extending the image on the left side. Interestingly enough, it gave it a watermark, which we could remove and we could do that within painting. Let's drag this image into here. At the top right of the screen, you have some tools here. This is the size of your brush. So if I bring that up and down, I wonder if it has shortcut keys, but we'll use this for now. So we'll just brush over that. We'll generate the image. You'll notice that it's just working on the masked area here. There you go. Easy fix for watermarks. And of course you can do more. Let's say we wanted to change the head of this uh, wolf here something a little different. Let's do two variations. We see we're getting more of a dog-like image instead of a wolf, but that's cool. There are the two in-painted variations. I like that one. That one's nice. Pretty simple in-painting and out-painting options you have. Now, one of the two latest things that came about, remember in the beginning we had two other bat files? anime and realistic. To be honest, I'm not sure why they're separate, but there are options here. Let's turn off the cinematic. We'll leave the focus V2 on. I'm going to try this anime prompt. This is just like a Assassin's Creed type of thing. And let's just do 1024 by 1024 focus anime. 
we'll do two images just so we have something to compare. Then I'm going to try launching the anime.bat as well, just to see what the difference is. So here we have the anime version. If we look under styles, you see that it pre-selects focus V2. Focus Anime, Stability AI's Anime, Digital Art, Fantasy Art, Enhance. We've got a negative embedding here. And I put in the same seed and uh, prompt. We'll run these two. So we see the clear differences here. More of an anime style comparing the initial version that I generated. Interesting. So I guess if you want to do strictly anime, it's uh, good to run that version. Definitely going to have fun playing with this one. Let's try the realistic version. So we see the originals below here and the realistic versions up top. Looks a lot more photorealistic based on what I'm seeing here. Now what's happening here is that they're downloading particular models. For the realistic version, we have realistic stock photo right here. And there seems to be a LoRa as well, SDXL film photography style. There's also some pre-done negative prompts. Some styles applied, Focus V2, Focus Realistic, Focus Strong Negative. And for the anime version, we already talked about the styles and stuff. But in terms of the models, we have Blue Pencil XL, Dream Shaper 8 being used as a refiner. That's interesting. And then the regular SDXL offset LoRa. So that's a quick overview of the latest updates to Focus. I'm gonna dive deeper into more specific things like in painting, out painting, and the other anime and realistic versions. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm also pretty bummed out that the MRE version isn't gonna be updated moving forward. I really liked that version, especially with ControlNet. Hopefully they'll put it into this version. Until the next one, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.